Now here I've drawn a circle and shown the radius, which I'll label R. Now, if I start from here and go round the circumference and travel the same length as the radius here, it's going to go round to approximately there, judging by that length. Okay, and I'll label that R for the radius. That obviously isn't the radius, but the length of that arc is the same as the radius here. If I join from the end here back to here, that too is the radius. Now I have an angle, a turn from here to here, okay, and this angle in here is often called the angle at the centre of a circle subtended by an arc of length r. And when this happens, this angle is called a radian, one radian. So I'll pop that in there one radian. Now obviously I could write one radian in words, just like we write one degree in words. But we have a symbol for degrees, which is a little circle. But for radians, the notation that we use is one with a little c, or whatever the angle is with a little c. Quite often though, we get a bit lazy and we don't actually write the C in. So if you find that we're talking about an angle and it hasn't got the symbol for degrees in and it's just left as a number, then we have to assume that it is in radians. So if you saw something like 3 with a little C there, we know it's 3 radians, if it had three with a little circle there, it's three degrees. But if it didn't have anything there, we have to assume that it's in radians. OK, so there we go. We'll just put that in, though, for this example with a little c there. One radian, then. The angle subtended by this arc at the centre of a circle of radius r. Now, how many radians do you think it takes to go round a complete turn of 360 degrees. Well, judging by this diagram, if I was to just try and estimate it, if I come round here, I think the next length of R would take me to about there-ish. So if I went to there, and then again around to about there, and then again to about there. It's not drawn to scale. And another one to about there. And another one to about there, I would think. You'll notice that I've got about one, two, three, four, five, six, and a little bit more. Six and a bit radians seem to be the equivalent of a turn of 360 degrees. Well, to calculate this accurately, what I need to do is find out how many times I can fit the radius into the circumference. And that will tell me how many radians there are that are equivalent to one turn of 360 degrees. So let's carry out that sum here. Let's just introduce it as being the number of radians okay, in one turn in one turn of 360 degrees. Well, it's going to be equal to, as we said, the circumference okay, divided by the radius. I'm looking to find out how many times I can fit that radius into the circumference. Hopefully you remember the formula for the circumference of a circle it's 2 pi r. And if we divide that by the radius r, you'll notice that the two r's cancel and that would leave us with 2 pi. Now we estimated that there'll be, just looking at this, about six and a bit radians in one complete circle, but in actual fact it's exactly 2 pi. Now pi is just a little over 3, 
so 3.14 say and uh, so two lots of 3.14 is going to give me six and a bit more okay so a little over six radians but to be exact it's two pi radians should really put a C there just to remind you that it is in radians so what have we got then we've got 360 degrees is equivalent then to 2 pi radians and from this we can get some other well-known results that you should try and learn for instance 180 degrees is related to 360 degrees it's half of it so half of 2 pi radians would be pi radians just a little over three radians there you go look up here one two three and a little bit more for 180 degrees 90 degrees that's half of 180 degrees so must be half of pi pi over two radians pi being a little over three three divided by two 1.5 just a little bit more than one and a half radians to turn 90 degrees we can build up this up and get 45 degrees 45 degrees half of 90 degrees or a quarter of 180 degrees either way it's going to be pi over 4 radians a quarter pi other well-known angles are 30 degrees 30 degrees is going to be one-sixth of 180 degrees or a third of 90 degrees again if I divide pi by 6 that will give me the 30 degrees equivalent to uh, that 180 divided by 6 or I could do 30 degrees from the 90 degrees a third of 90 a third of pi upon 2 is pi upon 6 radians and if I double this I'm going to have 60 degrees for instance 60 degrees doubling one sixth is two sixths or a third pi pi over three I could get 60 degrees for instance by dividing 180 degrees into three parts pi over three again so there's many ways that I can get these very common multiples or fractions of pi and from these as well we should be able to build up as I say multiples of these angles for instance 30 degrees okay 30 degrees double it we get 60 degrees treble it we got 90 degrees that's three lots of this 3 pi upon 6 becomes pi upon 2 we can get 120 degrees for instance 120 degrees is four lots of 30 that's 4 pi over 6 4 pi over 6 or 2 thirds pi 2 pi over 3 here was a third pi 60 degrees if I do 2 thirds pi I must have two lots of 60 degrees 120 degrees again anyway I'll leave it to you to build up some of the well-known angles okay but this is essentially an introduction to radians.